we so you and I have talked about you know if someone's going to make a a change with their business they have to have either a sense of urgency or they have to have the belief that they can make those changes and you know a common objection that you and I have seen with coaches that live in the UK is like oh this is like only an American thing like you know people over here won't pay a subscription and then like you and I have also seen coaches in our program, like this guy in Ireland, Thomas, who's has subscription based everything with it within his training business. Yeah. Like, if someone's belief is low on switching how they run their business, if they were on a call with you, what would be like a piece of advice you would give them? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I think it, it, it goes back down to, in, in my opinion, it comes back down to what's your, what's your philosophy with your business, right? So it comes back down to what, what does your business stand for, right? Because if someone asks me, right, Leo, what, what does your academy specialize in? If I'm able to answer that, then that, no, then that for me means that I have a belief in what I'm doing. A lot of the coaches we speak to, you ask them, what do you specialize in? Oh, I specialize in one-to-one. -one. Oh, I specialize in group. But they, they, won't, they don't narrow down exactly what problem they solve for, for clients. So if you don't, if you're not solving a problem for your clients, then you know your clients will never really be able to trust you, I believe, when you make the transition with your business. Right. Be because essentially, when you have a philosophy, you're taking that client through a journey. Right. So where when they start from you, the development they're making until you know, when they leave your program, which hopefully they leave to, to go on to better and, and greater things. But if that client has a belief in what you're offering, then when you transition your business, whether that be you're transitioning uh, the structure of the program or the payment system, then it's a no-brainer for parents. Parents will be like, okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll do it. But when you don't even know what your program stands for, what your business represents, then it's easy for parents to take the exit. Because they're like, oh, do you know what? Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to go and just do something else. Because yeah. it also comes down to, so if your client from the first moment they start training with you, if you're not on point to the point where if you don't speak to the parent on a sales call and if you don't actually explain and break down from the beginning what your program does, then you can't go halfway down when that client's been with you three or, or four or five months and say, right, we're transitioning to now a monthly payment. Because in that parent's mind, they're going to think, oh, do you know what? He just wants more money from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I hope that makes sense. It does. Yeah. And let's, so let me shift this because we know a lot of coaches. We were just talking about it before, you know, got on here. Yeah. If, if a parent messages them on social media or WhatsApp or their phone, whatever it is, and they say, Hey, hey tell us about your program. And then they'll, you know, these coaches will just send a, a text. It's like a script that's mm -hmm. like, Here's what we do. Here's our pricing. Here's our retraining. Here's like, and it's almost like they're sending this bundle of information to this person. And if the if the person's like, yeah, it looks good, they'll buy it. But there was never a sales call. It was a sales text. So what is the difference in your mind between that type of communication where you're just like messaging? and sending back information versus actually selling over the phone? What, what is the biggest difference in your mind? Yeah. Um, 
I, I don't think there's a problem with with sending out like a sales text, but the problem most coaches have is they don't follow up. So they won't follow up with a parent and say, right, Mrs. Jones, did you have a chance to look at what I sent you? Uh, what are your thoughts? What they'll do is they'll just send parents information and the chances are that parent probably had a look and then got distracted with something else. So, so there's no follow-up. Now, when you have a sales call, which a lot of people hate using that word sales call. So you, you can reword it to introduction call, whatever you want to call it, right? Then you're actually getting on the call with the parent and you're asking the parent questions about their child. So as a business owner, you, you automatically know what type of parent you're going to be dealing with. You know, when, when you just do a sales text and then that parent says back, oh, great, okay, we'll see you on Monday. They, they, they show up, right? Maybe the kid is great trainer, but you get them into the program, then you find out that the parent is an absolute headache to work with. And then how do you get rid of them yeah. when, they, when they've paid you? Right. So the difference is sales text is fine, but only if you have a follow-up. And I think that follow-up should include an introductory call with that parent. Mm -hmm. Yep, because on that call, you can talk about your standards, your expectations, who you accept in the program. Yeah. And you elevate the experience with that, that parent automatically because like most coaches don't have the intro call mm. or sales call, however you want to spin it. And they'd rather just text or DM the information and see if that person responds. Um, now, let me ask this question. Do you think it's physically possible <laughs> if a coach texts the parent and they're like, yeah, this is a 12 month minimum agreement. It's $3,000 up front. You're going to get this, 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 and this. Do you think that parent will just go online and pay? No. And the reason why is because if it's not a $3,000 service, if you're offering something that's $3,000, you don't send it by a text message. Right. You actually make the effort to get on the call with them and ask the parent questions, actually meet the client. Right. Right. Now it's different if you're like, yeah, it's $30. You can come whenever you want. Like, yeah easy for people to just bang out their phone, put their credit card, Venmo, PayPal, whatever it is, yeah. smash the payment and then show up. And then you're dealing with someone, I don't even know the kid's name yet. Mm -hmm. You have zero idea of who this person is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't think I've ever told you the story. So like it's, it's on this subject. So when, right when I started my business, I was thinking about, you know, how can I try to get more exposure? And back then, Craigslist, I don't know if you're familiar with what that is, but Craigslist, yeah. It was a very popular way to like do like free posting. So it's like I could go on there. I had this subject line. It was uh, yeah. free private soccer training lessons. Yeah. So people click on that. And I have my number there. Mm -hmm. uh, people would just text me. Mm -hmm. and they, they, they wouldn't call they would text and I used to do exactly what you and I are talking about they would text me and say hey where's the sessions at I would tell them it was at this park mm -hmm. and then I would meet them and talk to them for the very first time once I saw them in person yeah. and without going into all the details I ran into this crazy person <laughs> uh and I put myself in a terrible spot because like, I never talked to that person on the phone. I just met them at the park thinking, oh, this is someone who wants training. And it was like yeah. a really bad situation I put myself in. And that was my fault. And like, I imagine a lot of the coaches that are just messaging parents back and forth about pricing, schedule, like 
It's too hard to do that when you multiply that by a lot of parents. Yes. All right. And, and I always, I've said this a lot to the coaches and I know you've heard this, but it's like, it's going to be better to have like one client who's deadly committed than like 10 people who just show up whenever they want and pay per session. Let's say a parent texts you and they're like, Hey Leo, how, like how much are your sessions? Like what's the, how do you, how do you handle that? Like if someone sends you a text or an email, what are you, what are you trying to move them to? Yeah. So for me, and thankfully, when I started my business, uh, I had you as a mentor. So I never have ever, and I say this proudly, have sent or responded to the parent with prices. Why? Un unless, unless it's like I'm doing like a camp. Right, 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 right. Right, but if it's actually into my training program, my response is like great like thanks for getting in contact with me uh, first thing we need to do is we we need to get get on a call uh where i can answer some some of your questions so i've had parents that have uh, not responded back to that text message uh, i've had other parents that have responded back and said okay that's fine um, I've had other parents that have said, yeah, cool, that's fine. And then we've booked the call. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, they don't come to an evaluation session unless I've spoken to them before on a phone call. Right. Now, if I hadn't have found you and if I hadn't have learned how you teach, then I would have just been like everyone else because that's what everyone does. That's the norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's, it's weird. It's like, oh, this person's interested. They want to do this. So let me just send them something and see if they sign up. And if they sign up, awesome. Like, I didn't really have to do anything yeah. to earn this client. And that's oh. why there's a, there's a big drastic difference between clients who come whenever they want and clients who are very committed that invest more that truly want like the transformation yeah for their but child. also also picture it from if you're a parent and you you know you have a child that's interested just just picture it if if a coach gets back to you and says oh he, he would like to jump on a call with you to answer any questions i don't know in my head i'm thinking wow like he's actually taking time out to talk to me Mm -hmm. so and then when i get on the call i actually get to know get, get to know him before i even get to the field right so you're building a relationship with with that client before they even meet you in person mm -hmm. and that i don't know that for me if i'm taking my son somewhere you know i want to be i want to go in there with a with the mindset that my son is in good hands Yep. or my child is in good hands my daughter is in good hands whatever mm. and i can only go in there if i've spoken to the coach before and he's actually demonstrated that he cares about my child yep yep a, a, a quick response with prices just shows that you know what like he must get this on a regular basis and there's just no effort to actually service me. Yep. And there's and there's layers to this, right? So let's say layer one is just fire back a templated text that has the information, has the payment link. Yeah. They pay. Layer two is uh, you send them a, back a message to set up a call. All right. Yeah. Layer three is you can either have a phone call or you could have a Zoom call. Cool. So what's to Tell us what's the difference between a phone call and a Zoom call, yeah. like an intro call with the parent. Yeah. So a phone call is obviously you you're listening to their voice. Um, 
a Zoom call, I always recommend it's a lot better because obviously you have the parent in front and they can pay a lot more attention to you. On a phone call, a parent might be doing, they might be cooking while they're speaking to you. So you might ask them questions, they respond, and then, but then any information you give them might go in, in one ear and out the other. Yeah. But whereas in a Zoom call, you know, they don't, they can't go on their phone while they're talking to you because it's face to face. Right. It would be disrespectful for them to like to look at the TV while you're on the Zoom call or, or try to be preoccupied doing something else. So it requires more attention. Yeah. And then also, too, like you're able to go back and watch that call study it see how it went and then you could also send that recording back to the parent because most parents if it's a husband or a wife you might be talking to the wife the husband's at work yeah well you can use that recording and send it back to her so she can watch it back with her husband because he's going to have questions right when he gets home because he's not going to be thrilled to have that conversation of oh yeah we found this private trainer it's going to be this much today like so Correct. that yeah that call can solve a lot of problems if it's recorded on Zoom. Cool, man. Right. So great, great info. Um, anything else you want to add just like with sales, like as far as like the problems that you're seeing with uh, coaches that just send DMs to, to the payment link? Anything else? Just always, well, number one is always have a, a scheduled call with the parent right before you see them in person and on that call be like really prepared so make sure you have at least three or four really good questions that you can ask them so they can open up to you and also it helps you because you you get to to hear or see what kind of parent they are mm -hmm. and if they if they're a parent that has a lot of attitudes uh, or they they they're busy doing other things. And ultimately, they're going to be like that in your program. Right. Right. Uh, and the chances are their child is probably going to be like that as well. Right. Because uh, yeah. kids usually, not in all, not all cases, but they usually follow in their parents' footsteps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Exactly>. So <laughs> if the parent is difficult, sometimes the, the child can be difficult as well. Right. So are you saying that, let's say you have a scheduled call, it's on Zoom, Yeah. you're like super prepared showing up for that call. Yeah. Are you willing to disconnect that call if you show up to the call and the parents just like all over the place? Uh, <laughs> at this point, probably because I've done, I've had so many calls with parents that it's like, in my head, it's like, if you know if i say well if i log off then i i've got no guilt i'm not feeling guilty because i know i know that that parent just wasn't the right one and i know another one will come but uh, it's always good to leave a good good image right, right, right if right. you if, if you just log off then that parent is you might have had a great conversation but they're always going to remember you doing that so I think it's just being polite and saying, listen, Miss Jones, if, if now is not the right time, would there be a time where we can reschedule so, so we can have like a, an actual proper conversation and get your child signed up for an evaluation session so they can start training with us straight away? Yep. Um, so you're, 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 get, you're letting them know that before they work with you, they, you have to have this call. Yep. Yeah. And that sets the standard because like, I can see how, how a lot of coaches, they could get to a call like that and be like, yeah, they're busy. So I'm still going to sell them my program right now. And I'm just going to completely disregard how they are on this call because like, they're just kind of all over the place and they'd rather have that $30 per session type of thing than nothing. Yeah. And then I always say to that coach, well, how is that kid going to get better? Like, what if they're not showing up? What if 
the parents owe you money. Correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I see, I see this a lot with coaches as well, that they'll be out of the field and there'll be a group of kids there and they start selling to the actual kid. <laughs> like they'll sell to the kid, oh, do you, do you, you know, you're a good player. Do you want one-on-one -on -one training? The kid will be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what they do is they'll, they'll get the parent's number, but instead of actually calling the parent, they'll just text the parent. Okay. back to the old ways of back to the old ways right. um, and then what happens is everything is, the, is go, going through that, that kid so that if that kid is showing up well if that kid shows up if you're lucky then he'll bring the money for the coach right if yeah. the kid doesn't show up then you don't get paid yeah he's like the male boy now he, he... And sometimes it'll show up and you might not have the money. Exactly. Sometimes, yeah, yeah I've seen that. And what well. happens then? Are you just going to kick him out of the session? Or are you going to be nice? You know, let him train and then get paid later? Yeah. yeah they're, they're, those, are, those are some big problems a lot of coaches face. Um, mm -hmm. Cool, man. So just to kind of recap, the conversation you have with parents, if, if there's any sort of inbound message that, that you get as a coach, you should try to move that over to a call. Always. Scheduled. Ideally, it's on Zoom so you can see the person. Yeah. Be ready, have questions, and kind of put them through an application process to make sure they're a good fit. And if you're going to sell any sort of longer-term agreement, yeah. if you sell a longer-term agreement, should that should that be talked about like after they come to an eval should that be talked about on the initial call like what what do you suggest to coaches if they're going to only accept longer term types of agreements when should that conversation come up in your in your opinion it's a good it's a good question i think it should should come up um maybe after you've had the evaluation session so once you've already worked with the player Maybe you've had like a reduced session. So instead of doing like an hour long session, you might do, you might invite them for a 20 minute session to see what they like. And then after that, we reschedule the call to then talk to them about the next steps. And I mean, it, personally, I've, I've done both. Uh, I've spoken to parents before about pricing, commitment, and I've said to them, but that, that won't be talked about until I've seen your child and I feel mm. that he's a good fit. Mm. If he's a good fit, then we have our second call and that's where we talk about pricing, commitment and what, what the next steps to move forward. Right. Yep. Yeah, we see coaches do it both ways. Um, and what, what I've seen is... Let's say you do it the first option you're talking about where it's like you have the eval and then you tell them after. <clears throat> I see sometimes coaches, they tense up when they talk about a three, six or 12 month type of agreement because they, they feel like either the person is going to say no or the coach in their mind might be like, yeah, I just, I don't know if I can charge this much for a six month upfront thing like what what should that coach do if they get tense like what 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 piece of advice do you have for someone like that who's trying to switch over to a longer term agreement maybe they haven't done it yet or they've tried it and they've just gone back to the old boys like what, what would you tell that person you you've just got to keep keep going um first of all everything that you do for the first time is going to be hard so don't expect parents maybe the first few calls to say yes or to, to agree with it. But like I, like I mentioned on the previous uh, one, one of these calls we had, uh, instead of going for the full three months, why don't you start getting your clients committed for one month up front first? And then once you, once you realize that, you know what, this works and I'm, I feel confident doing two months, then the next call, you can try and get them onto two-month commitment 
happen upfront payment. And then once you get a little bit more confident, then you go for free. So it's just little steps at a time. Um, and, you know, understand that some parents will say no because it's new. Some parents won't understand why they need to commit to three months. Um, but again, it, it comes down to you and your belief in what you're offering. If you don't believe heavily in what you're offering, then parents are going to smell that. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I think a lot of coaches associate objections. Like, let's say a parent is like, you know, this sounds great, but we can't commit to this amount of time or, yeah. or what if you know johnny has piano lessons on the same day starting on this day like a lot of coaches tense up too when when they hear these objections or obstacles that, that mm -hmm. parents have on those calls and uh I, I know one thing that's worked really good for me is is when you get an objection like that it's like you agree with the objection and you create a solution and like the only way you're going to be able to create a solution though is if you've had enough of those calls yeah. to then decipher well what can we do what can we agree to versus yeah. just ending the call and saying oh well they can't work with me anymore correct um yeah. and it's, so yeah it's it's all about confidence confidence like but conf with confidence comes repetition we need to just keep keep going because at the end of the day, you every every coach wants results with their with their clients, right? Every coach wants their players to get better, but they're not going to get better if if you're seeing them once a month. So you have to explain that to the parent to say, right, in order for your child to get the best results with me, I need to be seeing them once every week. Yeah. And if you put it like that, then parents are going to say like, do you know what? Okay, this coach actually cares about my child. This coach actually wants good results with him. Mm -hmm. And we now understand that in order for that coach to work and get the best out of my child, I need to bring him every week to see him, to see this co coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, because the parents, committed parents pay for results uncommitted mm -hmm. parents pay for an hour of babysitting mm -hmm. whenever they whenever they feel like the time is right to drop off their kid mm -hmm. and to offload their kid so that's why it's that's why it's a really really big difference between those who value the service and those who just want to you know take their kid somewhere drop them off for an hour so they can just go do whatever they want for an hour Correct. Um, Correct. Great, man. Awesome. Awesome info. And uh, if a UK coach is watching this right now and they want to get on a call with you and talk to you about their business, how how can they get on a call with you? Yeah, so two ways. Um, you can email me directly, makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com. Uh, we'll put that on the, on the video, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second way you can do it, is in the link in the description there will be a link in the description of this video you can click it and it'll take you to a calendly calendar and you can just book a, a free 15 to 20 minute call where we we jump on like like we're doing now i ask you some questions about your business get to see where you're at connect and show you some actionable tips you can take straight away with with your business perfect perfect Awesome, man. Yeah, so any coaches that are watching this, go down right below this video. You can see the link in the description. You can see the comment link there. Sign up to chat with Leo. It's free. Um, or you can shoot him an email at that email address we have there. Great, man. Thanks so much. Superb.